So let's take a look at the groove for Give It Away by the Chilies, drums played by the inimitable Chad Smith, of course, and it's off the album Blood Sugar Sex Magic that was released in 1991, and this was the first single of that marvellous, marvellous record. Uh, I recommend you check it out. I don't know if any of you still listen to albums, but yeah, it's a beautiful recording. It was produced by Rick Rubin and recorded in the haunted Harry Houdini house famously. And it's one of those legendary albums that really bears listening to. It's got some amazing songs on there. It's got loads of cool grooves. Uh, the energy of the band is absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it and it sounds really, really good uh, Listen to at Dangerously Loud volumes. Not that I'm recommending you should do anything quite so silly. The Chilies are often described as funk rock and Chad Smith's playing in this recording epitomizes both of those things beautifully. It's punchy, it's groovy, and uh, he plays more or less the same groove throughout the song with just a couple of beautiful fills thrown in for good measure. It's very restrained for all its mad energy. So learn how to play this and try and get yourself sounding like Chad as much as you can. This is my attempt. So let's take a look at this groove then. First things first, we're playing eighth notes on the hi-hat and two and four on the snare most of the time, a straightforward rock pattern. Uh, bear in mind that Chad Smith is playing pretty sloshy hi-hat, so he's relaxed his foot quite a bit. We're getting a very jangly, sloshy, sloshy, there's no better word. We're getting a very sloshy sound on the hi-hats there. Uh, if you open the hi-hats too much, gets a bit too thin and indistinct so you just want to relax it enough so you can hear the cymbals kind of clanging against each other but you still hear a good bit of stick definition next we're going to be playing rim shots on the snare I'm pretty sure he's playing rim shots throughout and uh, if you're not used to playing rim shots, uh, what I mean by, by rim shot is hitting the rim and the head of the drum at the same time, so like this. And you want to spend some time practicing doing that so you get a very high level of success. There's, there's nothing worse than playing a groove and accidentally just hitting the rim on occasion or even getting good rim shots some of the time and normal snare drum strokes the rest of the time. You want to work on a high level of accuracy. Uh, if you're not confident that that's going to happen, if you go out and play a song like this, don't use the rim shots until you've really worked on it. Anyway, our hi-hat and snare together is just this. And so on and so on. On the bass where all the cool stuff is happening, we've got this. So we have bass on the one, the R of one, the and of two, and then we have E and of three, E and of four. We're going to learn how to play this pattern using a method called chunking. That means I'm going to take each quarter note in turn, work it out, and then stick all the bits together to make the full pattern. First and foremost, we have the one ander, which goes like this. Okay, we've got the bass on the one, hi-hat on the and, and another bass drum on the uh. I'm not gonna do the sloshy hi-hat thing now, because uh, oh, um, it's all noisy enough. Next, we've got the two and, very simply, So let's put the one and a two and together. Okay. After that, we have the three and the E and the and, like this. 
that's a bit that some people might find a little bit challenging. And then after that we have the four E and, where we've got hi-hat and snare, then the bass, then the hi-hat and the bass. Let's put the three E and four E and together. Now if you still remember the one and a two and, we can put that together with the three E and four E and. Here we go. And that's your basic groove. Uh, as I say in most of my videos, don't worry if it takes you a few goes around. If you're unfamiliar with the, the coordination of some of those bits, take your time, get comfortable with it. And then finally, when you've assembled it all together, make sure you play it really, really slowly. And I strongly, strongly recommend counting out loud while you're doing it. And just play it until it feels really, really relaxed. Then you can start focusing on building up the speed once your body's really remembered the groove. Now we know how the groove goes, let's have a look at the fills. The song opens with two snare drum strokes and then a bass. A four and. A four and. Like this. Then we have the groove going and in the fourth bar we have a fill that goes like this. One and two and a three E and a four E and a. Okay. One and two a three E and a four E and a. You should be able to get the hang of that just by listening to it a bunch of times. Throughout the rest of the song, we've got more or less the same fill repeating itself in the choruses. It goes like this. We have bass on the one and the art of one with hi-hat on the eights. Hi-hat on the eights throughout, actually. One and a, then we have two and and on the snare. Then we have a little paradiddle thing on the three, three E and R. With the hi-hat again. Three E and R. And then at the end we have four E and. Four on the snare, E on the bass, and on the hi-hat. Okay, pretty straightforward. Once you've got the hang of the fill, you can start practicing doing some variations. All you need to do is change what you play on the four Rihanna, on the last beat of every fill bar that you play. Uh, let's do a four bar exercise. I'm going to play the regular groove four times and then I'm going to play the fill with a little variation on the last beat each time and let's see how that goes. It's kind of fun to just work out these things as you go. And uh, don't be too anal about it. You can uh, get the hang of the groove nicely, try and play some fills, and if everything gets a bit messed up, just enjoy the process. Uh, keep working on it until you feel confident enough that something cool is going to come out of it. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Take 47. Yeah, don't try and play a role at the end of that. I don't recommend it. But there you go, that's improvisation for you. Anywho, that's what you need to know to be able to do a decent rendition of Chad Smith's drumming on the Chili Peppers Give It Away.
Thank you very much for watching this. If you found this useful or entertaining or whatever it is, please leave me a comment and let me know. And uh, if you've got any suggestions for future videos, I'm very, very interested to hear. Uh, don't forget to do this liking and subscribing and, and all of that good stuff. And uh, if you do need some one-on-one -on -one help, I'm available via Zoom or Skype, wherever you happen to be in the world. So feel free to get in touch. I'll put links in the description. Now, it's probably time for you to go off and practice.